In this video, we're going to show you five different ways to convert a line level signal into a microphone level signal. There are a lot of different reasons that you might want to do this. Maybe you want to connect an audio mixer to another audio mixer, an audio mixer to an audio interface, a microphone preamp into an audio mixer, an instrument like a DJ controller or electric keyboard into an audio mixer, or an audio mixer into a video camera. We're going to walk through all those different applications and show you different methods for connecting everything and the pros and cons of everything that we show you in this video along with a little bit of theory so it all ties it together and makes a little bit of sense for you. Before we get into the connection methods, let's quickly take a look at the setup that I have in front of me here so it makes sense as we walk through all the different examples for the purposes of this video. I have a small audio mixer here, the Mackie Pro FX 6V3. It has a laptop plugged into it through the line level inputs on it and you can see here that the gain is set correctly so the gain on this audio mixer is around 0 db and we're going to use this as our line level source to connect it to a microphone level signal for all the methods that we're going to show you in this video. Next we have the Yamaha MG10XU. This is a great compact audio mixer. If your audio mixer is bigger or smaller than this, the tips and tricks in this video will work for you. The audio interface here, the Scarlett 2i2, is basically just in this video for eye candy. I just have it here so I can make the point that everything that we're going to show you on the audio mixer here today will also work on your audio interface. So don't be concerned that we're mostly talking about audio mixers in this video. Converting a line level signal to a microphone level signal works exactly the same way on your small audio interface as well. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, we do have some links down in the description below where you can find current up-to-date pricing from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. Okay, next we have one piece of theory that we need to cover before we can actually get into the connection methods in this video. And that's the difference between a line level output and a microphone level input. Let's start at the loudest of this. The loudest output of an audio mixer is a line level output. If it's XLR or balanced TRS, it's generally coming out at 0 dB or plus 4 dB. For the purposes of this video, let's pretend that this is all relative. There's not an exact voltage assigned to that. But let's just remember that your output coming from your audio mixer is at plus 4 dB. A little bit quieter than that, if your audio mixer or device that you're using has an RCA output, that's at minus 10 dBV, which is actually a difference of about 11 dB, but we'll call it minus 14 in this. The difference between minus 10 and plus 4 is 14 dB. So RCA outputs are just a little bit quieter. Next, we have the microphone level inputs. Generally speaking, this is somewhere around 25 dB less than your XLR audio outputs on a line level output here. So let's just keep that in mind. In theory, it's somewhere between minus 30 and minus 50 dB, but practically I find that when I'm actually working with these outputs, it's about the difference between minus 25 dB. So that's what we really need to think about in this video, is reducing the output of our XLR outputs of an audio mixer, about 25 dB in order to get them to sit properly in a microphone level input. Okay, one last thing before I show you the real stuff that you're here to see, is what actually happens practically if we screw this up. What happens if we connect a line level output from an audio mixer to a microphone level input on an audio mixer? Why is this bad? Let's quickly connect it and show you. That's the easiest way to show you. So I'm gonna connect an XLR cable to the line level output, and then I'm gonna connect an XLR cable to the mic level input. Now you can see here right away, my levels are at zero dB coming out of this audio mixer, and the peak light on this channel is lit up. It's already telling me that it's losing quality and it's distorting at the input. My preamp is turned all the way down, so I'm not boosting this in any way whatsoever, and it's peaking and clipping. What does that mean? That means, one, we're losing audio signal, and two, this input knob is gonna be so touchy. If I turn this up here, you can see here, it's barely turned up, maybe three out of 10, and we're already at zero dB, which is a little bit higher actually when you compare these two meters as to the output on the Mackie audio mixer here. Now, this means that if you're working like this, you have a very narrow operating range, but you're also losing quality. Now, if you do happen to get this volume knob up to zero or unity, you should hear it right now. It's peaking, it's clipping, it's distorted, it's really horrible. And not only all of those things, 
But if you do this too much, you're actually going to fry the voltage inside your audio mixer. I'm just hoping that that never happened for the purposes of this video, but I did want to demonstrate it. You don't want to be doing this on a regular basis. You will damage your audio mixer, have bad audio quality, and have a narrow operating range on your rotary knob or fader. Okay, so for option one here is cheating a little bit. Technically, we're not reducing the line level output on this audio mixer to a mic level input on this audio mixer. What we're going to do here is we're actually going to hunt for a line level input, which is more appropriate for what we're doing. This way, we don't actually have to convert or downgrade or reduce the volume or anything like that from this audio mixer. We're just going to find a line level input. So to do this, we're going to use a balanced TRS cable. We have links down in the description below. I can connect this to the quarter inch output on this audio mixer. And over here, I'm going to find a line level input. So you can see here, I have a couple line level inputs of five and six. This is a stereo line level input. So you would want to run the right output as well into this. But then if we turn this up, you can see here that I'm getting level. You can see that it's mono. We're only getting the left side right now, but I have a good operating range with this rotary knob and it's taking a line level output and finding a line level input. Now, if you are using something like an audio interface, you see one of these XLR combi jacks here, nine times out of 10, you do have to read the user manual to make sure, but the XLR input on this is expecting a mic level signal and the quarter inch input on this is expecting a line level signal. So if you are connecting an audio mixer to your audio interface, or if you're connecting a microphone preamp into your audio interface, then you'd want to use a quarter inch cable. So you might need an XLR to quarter inch adapter or something like that. As long as it's TRS, it will be balanced. And then you can connect this to the quarter inch input on your audio interface, and that will be a properly matched signal from the line level output of your source to the line level input on your Scarlett 2i2. Okay, option number two is to use the DI box. A DI box is really cool for a bunch of reasons. It will, one, reduce your line level output to a microphone level input, which is what we're trying to do in this video. But two, it will also balance your audio signal. So if you have an unbalanced audio source from an electric keyboard or electric piano or some DJ controllers or anything like that, a bass guitar amp, this will balance your audio signal and reduce it to a mic level to bring it into your audio mixer. If you're using a balanced signal coming out of an audio mixer and you run it through a DI box, no harm done. It'll basically just work as an XLR pad and reduce that signal for you and it will send it all the way through to your audio mixer. So let's connect this now. So you can use a quarter inch output from your audio mixer or you can use an XLR to quarter inch TRS cable. They will work exactly the same for you, but you do need to get it to a quarter inch and then you can connect it to your input on your DI box. You can see here there's a left and right input. So I'm going to connect it to the left input. Beside this, you can see that there is an option for me to click a button here for a 15 dB pad. So if we do need to reduce the audio from this audio mixer even further, we can click that on. On the other side here, there's some XLR outputs. So I'm going to grab an XLR cable. With my XLR cable here, I'm going to connect the output of that DI box and connect this into channel one on our audio mixer. Now, if we look at the audio mixer here, this time you can see that it's not peaking. So this is great. I'm gonna turn up the level knob on the audio mixer. I'm gonna go all the way up to zero or unity here. And you can see here that we are just a little bit quieter than the output on the Mackie. So we can use the preamp here to bring us up just a little bit. And you can hear the music now. It doesn't sound peaked, clipped or distorted. This is a really high quality way to make a long cable run and balance your audio signal if you need to do that for a balanced out for an unbalanced output from a keyboard or something like that. Okay, option number three is to use a built-in pad on your audio mixer. I'm gonna show you what that means here. I'm gonna connect this XLR cable to the XLR output of our line level source. And connect the other end of this XLR cable into channel one on our audio mixer. You can see here, it's just like at the beginning of the video, it's peaking and distorting before we even add any gain from our preamp. But up at the top of this channel strip here, you'll see that it says pad 26 dB. On the Yamaha, it's 26 dB. Other brands are 15, 20, 25, 30 sometimes. You'll find this built into almost every digital audio mixer and on some high quality analog uh, 
mixers as well. So I'm going to click this on. Now you can see that that peak light turned off, so we've reduced the audio input by 26 dB, effectively taking the line level signal from this Mackie mixer and knocking it down to a mic level signal, which is what we want for the Yamaha. I'm going to turn the volume up to zero or unity here. And you can see that we're getting a very similar level on both. Maybe I just want to add a touch of gain to hit zero dB on the audio mixer. This is a really good option if you have an audio mixer with a built-in pad here. This won't work for balancing a signal over a long run like a DI box, but it means that you don't have to buy any extra equipment or anything like that. Now for option four, what happens if your audio mixer does not have a built-in pad? You can actually buy an inline XLR pad. So this has an XLR input and output on it. And these ones from Shure actually have an attenuation. So you can adjust it between 15, 20, or 25 dB with the little switch on the side. For the purposes of this video, I get the best results out of something like 25 dB, so that's how I'm going to set it. I'm going to connect the XLR cable here to the output of the Mackie mixer. I'm going to connect the other end of that XLR cable to this inline XLR pad. I'm going to make sure that the pad is turned off on the audio mixer from the previous step, and then I'm going to connect this. So you can see here that I'm not peaking or clipping, so I'm going to turn the volume up to that triangle zero or unity position on this mixer and turn it up just a little bit. And you can see that we are getting zero dB and you can hear now there's no peaking, clipping or distortion. If your audio mixer does not have a built-in XLR pad, this is a really good option. If you're a professional audio engineer, you should be carrying two of these in your backpack anyway. They're extremely helpful and you'll end up using them all the time. It'll save you with a lot of different types of stuff like this on a lot of different events. Okay, option number five here is absolutely perfect if you're trying to connect something like an audio mixer with a line level output or an audio interface with a line level output to a video camera. Typically, video cameras will only have an eighth inch microphone level input, something like this, an aux jack input, if you would. A lot of people call it that. If that's you, the best way for you to make this connection is to go out and buy a camera interface. This thing will give you a bunch of different features. It'll give you XLR inputs on it. And on the front end here, where the audio mixer is, you get an option to choose between line and mic level signal. So I'm going to make sure that it's on line level signal. Then I can connect my XLR cable into the input on this. Then I can connect this to my video camera and adjust the volume as needed. This is the best solution if you're trying to connect an audio mixer or anything with a line level signal into your SLR or point and shoot style video camera for the purposes of making a video like I'm making right now, a blog or a podcast or something like that. If you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that we covered in this video, we have links down in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment down below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.